The UK's research and innovation relationship with India is at the most exciting moment I can remember. The scale and the depth of our collaboration is unprecedented. More importantly, together we are better understanding and making better the world in which we both live. In the next few years, India will become the world's largest country by population. By 2030, or possibly sooner, India will become the world's third largest economy. And India is already one of the world's leading research and innovation powers, and only growing. Well, as established democracies and international trading nations, the United Kingdom and India are indeed a force for good in an uncertain world. Diffid in India has transitioned to a technical partnership with the Government of India, focused on sharing skills and expertise. With the establishment of UKRI, uh, the partnership that the catapults have established with India, and particularly our catapult, digital catapult, will improve. I believe that they will create new opportunities for bilateral collaboration, and uh, it, is, it is a good thing. It is a good thing. We need to see how it evolves, but definitely something that uh, will help. Ten years back, uh, when I entered this field, all were running behind chemical farming. A farmer of India can uh, take the all advantages of UK government if it collaborate with India. At the same time, what happened, they will give the technologies which have been implemented already in UK. If our farmers will get that, automatically they can move to the next level like UK farmers itself. India is the world's fastest growing research and innovation power. It's also the world's fastest growing large economy. And with its enormous reservoir of young people, it has the talent that will constitute so much of the next generation of great researchers, innovators, entrepreneurs, and leaders. India will do wonders both for science and for society, primarily because of the quality investment in people. Training people through quality education in every aspect, but also in science and technology, prepares us for unprecedented events in the future in a way nothing else can. So basically our rice fuel project brought uh, together uh, scientists from India and UK who are expert in synthetic and system biology application into biofuels. Now, the rice fuel project aimed at converting rice straw into useful material because rice straw was being burnt uh, on the field and we wanted to make some useful material out of it. So the pest for the rice stem borer, which is basically eating up the rice straw, we make use of that particular pest to extract enzyme which can be used to convert rice straw into sugar and we further engineered microbes like geobacillus and E. coli to produce advanced biofuel molecules like alkane or hydrocarbon. This joint collaboration is making a real difference, creating jobs, changing lives and addressing global challenges. The Global Research Partnership Program, GRP, builds three-way research partnerships between the UK through DFID and UKRI, the Government of India's Department of Biotechnology, DBT, and developing country researchers to address shared global development challenges. Products being developed under this program are focusing on producing new solutions uh, to pressing development challenges. And a really good example of this is a novel blood pressure monitoring device uh, that is currently being trialled to prevent preeclampsia in low resource settings. So the, the prime endpoint for this was actually to, to get to mothers, um, particularly antenatal mothers and at time of delivery when these complications tend to hit. Because this device actually measures blood pressure in anybody and anyone can get sick with infection and bleeding or trauma, this has turned out to be an incredibly ubiquitous issue, not just in pregnancy but in any health populations. So there have been many additional projects that have escalated from this work, which has been incredibly exciting. In the 10 years since the UK Research Councils have dedicated a team here in India, our joint investment between the two countries has grown from under a million to more than 300 million pounds of collaborative research and innovation. The overarching principle for developing UK-India research and innovation partnerships further would be to take a really coherent approach 
by combining various instruments and also working across different government departments. Fundamentally important point we must see, which India has achieved, is strengths in various verticals, whether it's agriculture, health, energy. I mean, there's a revolution going on now in, in renewable energy. The UK is a natural and logical partner for India. The UK is the highest quality large research base, but also one of the most efficient in terms of the number of spin-out companies or academic articles we produce per pound of investment. And together, we are a more than logical partnership. Of course, when you're talking about something like nuclear energy, you've got to have the right relationships at a government-to-government -government level. The great thing about UKRI is they understand those challenges and they are able to facilitate the development of those relationships. So we have now funded four sets of projects and those four sets of projects can address all sorts of different issues from nuclear waste to nuclear fuel to those structures that we're building. And each time we're trying to understand a particular aspect of the engineering challenge. The Apex Consortium has proven how Indian and UK scientists can work together and achieve any specific objectives the research program asks for. One country has strength in one aspect, the other country in second aspect. That means India was well equipped in material development part of this project, whereas UK well equipped in device development. Joint UK-India articles have an academic impact two and a half times the world average. The India-UK partnership achieves a higher impact than India-USA, India-Japan or India-Germany. So the UK has a world-class research and innovation base, as we know, and India is a rising global power. Hence, increased collaboration between the United Kingdom and India on research can A, develop the knowledge economy of India, which is very important, B, bring enormous development benefits to developing countries, and C, contribute to global public goods. Our research and innovation collaborations bring tremendous benefits to both our countries, but they're also a global good. Through the UK and India working together to benefit third countries or to address global challenges, we are both showing responsible global leadership. So our project is to really deal with a problem that is worldwide, but particularly important in India, and that is bovine tuberculosis. The disease affects many millions of cattle, it can also be transmitted to humans, and causes many thousands of deaths each year. So it's an important problem. The impact was a vaccine that could be used to control bovine tuberculosis that would prevent the need for culling and would control the disease. The beneficiaries would be farmers uh, in India, but also uh, the consumers of milk products in India, the people who might otherwise have been infected with bovine tuberculosis. You know, it's, it's been so wonderful over the last decade working with RC UK and now with UK RI India. UK and India see ourselves as partners towards a global responsibility and as equal partners. We're, and, and we're seeing that because of the growth of Indian science and self-confidence amongst Indian scientists. When RC UK organized workshop in India, that really changed the scenario for us. So I think the role of RC UK had been extremely important for catalyzing the collaboration that we had between these two. So the last 10 years, the major difference that I see is that we know people now much better from both sides of the countries. We know their expertise. We can complement their expertise much better. In some sense, UK and India destinies have been uh, interlocked for centuries. We know that our time has come. The next project we are conceiving with our CUK. The scale is again very, very large. Huge set of people on the UK side, met, met people, scientists, mathematicians, and an equal number, equal number on the India side. So you will find the second project was so much easier to do because we could actually talk uh, by picking up the phone. This would not have been possible 10 years ago. UK Research and Innovation intends to be an outstanding organization that ensures the UK maintains its world-leading position in research and innovation.
In the next 10 years, I think we should expect more from our partnership. I think we should expect more excellence and more impact. I think together we can rise to inspire people to address these awesome challenges. And I think we should be impatient optimists about what together we can achieve.